Show them how I freed's crew can sail. Sir. We just received a Sylph Jay from the boss of the Bloodwings. She has a job for us and wants us to meet her in Logress. How should we respond? Let's do it. Besides, we need to see if that demon in the villa was actually a Therian. Good point. And the Bloodwings might know something about the other Therians, too. We're heading for Logress. Prepare to set sail. Ready anytime! I lost my mother to a demon. Yet that girl's a Therian. I... I don't even know what I want anymore. Hey! That's pretty! You like to look at that thing, don't you? Yes. My mother... Someone very important to me gave me this. I treasure it a lot. Looking at it gives me strength. Do you want to see it? Yeah! Ah! What's wrong? My face! It's... it's scary! Uh, I don't want to look like that! I don't want my mommy to hate me! her age. That's just how I cried. Come, Oana. I want you to see this. That huge owie. What happened? It's big and ugly, isn't it? There are scary things about my body, too. But do you think I'm scary, Come, Oana? No, not at all. But are you all right? Does that hurt? Thanks, sweetie. I'm all right, I promise. What about me? Do you think I'm scary? You're such a sweetheart, Kamoana. Nobody could ever be scared of you. Not me, not your mother, not Lapiset. You don't have to cry anymore. It'll be okay, I promise. <laughs> okay. That scar, was it from a demon? Yeah, they attacked my village when I was a girl. I was so hurt, I couldn't move. But my mother lured them away from me so I could survive. What happened to her? <sighs> the last thing she said to me was, stay strong and keep living. Come to the deck. Grimoire says she's learned something from the book. Hey, why is your face so red? It's nothing. Somehow, I doubt that. It's nothing, I, I swear. Do you all remember the second verse of that song Lafayette read earlier? Four Empyreans may tear him asunder, but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn in sight of the full crimson moon. Right. That's what I've gathered you all here to discuss. And we think that passage means that Inominach and the Therians will be revived by a chosen one, right? 
Yes, but the shall be forever reborn part kept bothering me. I've reconsidered my analysis. Suppose that instead of someone being chosen by Inominat to create Therians, the song means that Inominat chooses who becomes Therians. <laughs> but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn. What do you think that could mean? That someone receptive to Inominat's power will be reborn as a Therian. Like Kamoana. Which is to say that the Abbey figured out how to turn people into Therians, and then got right to work. That's... Are you really that surprised? Artorius has always been one to prioritize the many over the individual, as I well know. Another thing to consider is this wording about Therians being forever reborn. This could mean that one Therian will be reborn again and again. Or it could mean that different Therians will be born to take their place. Meaning that even if you kill one, there are more waiting in line. They can't be wiped out. Looks like prioritizing the one over the many was the right call this time, eh, Velvet? I never said I wouldn't kill her, if it would prevent Inominat's reawakening. But Therians can't be killed. Not truly. Hmm. So, in a nutshell, if you kill one, Another person who's receptive to Inominat's power will be reborn as one. Right. But the song says that seven mouths feed the body. So there's only so many around. If you don't kill them, the next ones won't be born. Exactly. So we remove the seven Therians from their Earth Pulse points instead. But then, we also have to protect them so the Abbey doesn't steal them back. Or kill them. Sounds tricky. We've got to protect my bug, too. Yeah, you take real good care of that thing now. Got it? You bet I will. In that case, we should probably work on securing a proper hideout for ourselves. You got a secret base or anything, Aizen? It's every man's fantasy, but sadly, I don't. We need a hard-to-find spot. One where we can guarantee a steady supply of malevolence for the Therians. Hmm, somewhere devoid of people, but full of malevolence. Real poser you got there. With the Abbey in control of the entire continent, finding a place like that will be easier said than done. Meanwhile, Inominat's reawakening draws ever closer. We'll have to keep collecting our Therians while we search for a hideout. For now, let's just get to Logris. I was drifting out at sea for three days. Almost died out there. We here, poor you. You probably deserved it. Say that again, wise ass. I dare you. Ah, uh, shut up, both of you. No one's getting anything until you pay me what you owe first. Uh, are they gonna be okay? Don't pay them any mind. Sailors are just a short-tempered bunch. That's all. Huh? The hell are you doing? What's going on? They've jacked up the price to dock our ship here. Oh, yeah? Some real balls you've got there, buddy. If you lot want to moor here, that's the price you're gonna pay. Look, pirates are a liability to begin with, but calling your crew infamous these days would be putting it lightly. The more wanted you are, the more it's gonna cost to hide you. Capiche? <sighs> Hard to argue there. Benwick, just pay the man what he wants. Uh, yes, sir. You're such pushovers. You and the cabin both. I knew I could count on you to come through, Eisen. Pleasure doing business with you. Looks like I'm causing you trouble. It comes with the job. Don't sweat it. Some sailors just have longer tempers than others. <laughs> Noted.
Here we are, back in Logris. It was a lot tougher to get in the first time. <laughs> More funny than tough, if you ask me. Oh, you mean Velvet's little dove act? Coo coo. I'd be careful teasing her if I were you. You know how she can get. Oh, don't act like you didn't enjoy it too. I'm sure you did, right? Good little boys don't lie to adults, you know. I might have, just a little. Say it like a dove. It was funny. Coo coo. Man, the capital sure is big. Yeah, with historical buildings and artisans and all, there's much of interest here for a boy who loves to learn. Uh-huh. Sightseeing's nice and all, but don't wander off and get lost. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Don't worry about him. He can take care of himself. I know. I was just saying. Eleanor, I need you to wait outside. The boss of the Bloodwings knows an exorcist is with us, but... Say no more. I'm sure they have clients who wouldn't appreciate their faces being known to the Abbey. Correct. Lafayette, you stay with Eleanor. Okay. I'll be back soon. My thanks for coming all this way. It's been a while. Would you care for a peach pie? What do you want? Oh, it would do you good to unwind every now and again, you know. Stretch a bow too far and its string is bound to snap. What do you want? <sighs> I would like you to escort this person out of the capital. Something smells about this, literally. Where am I taking them? Somewhere the authorities can't reach them. Sounds nice. I could do with such a place myself. No joke. We've been looking for a place to lay low, but we haven't had any luck yet. Well, come to think of it, I've heard a rumor that it's been a while since the Abbey has had any contact from Titania. The prison island. Titania? But I thought the Abbey was in direct control of that place. Has the situation there gotten that bad since you left? Sometimes the answer is right under your nose. I think it might work. Yeah, could make a decent hideout, actually. The Therians could definitely get their fill of malevolence there. And the Abbey is far too goody-goody to imagine an escaped prisoner would ever return to her prison by her own free will. At the very least, I'd say it's worth checking out. I take it our intel has proven useful? It has. But before we go, have you heard anything about the Abbey harboring demons? I'm aware there was a demon in the villa, and that it has been relocated. Where? I can't say right this moment, but I'm sure we will find out shortly. All right. Then in exchange for this passenger's safety, I want more information on that demon. You've got a deal. Aizen, I heard about your confrontation with Melchior. I'm sorry I wasn't able to help you find him. Yeah, he really blew that one, toots. It's fine. What's done is done. Have you given up on finding Eifried? No, I haven't. The crew and I will do whatever we can to quash the Abbey's plans. We do them enough damage, and the Abbey ought to start thinking about putting their hostage to good use. They'll set them up as a trap for us, 
and that's when we'll steal him back. Attacking the Abbey to create an opening for his escape. Clever. It's what Ifrid would do. That's all. They're taking a while. Yeah. The Shepherd has a special mission for you. You are to protect the Malak Lafiset and bring him to the Logris Abbey headquarters. <laughs> What's wrong? Hey, you want to take a walk around the capital for a bit? I can show you some of the sights. But, um... You... You can't trust me. I understand. No, it's not that. I promise. I'd love to go sightseeing with you, Eleanor. Luffy said. Uh, well, we'll do it another time, okay? Why? It's just, you know, Velvet would get mad at us. Get mad about what? Ah, you're done. And who is this? A VIP entrusted to us by the head of the Blood Wings. We're stowing them away on Titania where the bad guys can't get at them. The prison island? Just who is this person? Didn't ask. What? <sighs> hey, something smells nice. Uh, uh huh? <laughs> Stop sniffing things. We're leaving. I can't believe you take a job without bothering to ask who you're escorting or why. The less you know, the less trouble you invite.
Take a I knew this would be big. What a treasure! <laughs> Scout ships. Now this is one hell of a helmet. This is bull crap. You're gouging us just because you can. Well, if you want to pay less, maybe you should go find someone more generous, hmm? Looks like they're at it again. for supplies and tell you what I'll give you a fair price actually just take what you need <sighs> we should all endeavor to help contribute to the common good of humanity rather than selfishly pursue wanton profit what uh, are you sure uh, uh, no Wait, what was I saying? You felt that too, didn't you, kiddo? Yeah, it disappeared, but I felt a strong force coming from somewhere to the north. It's called a domain, a Moloch's zone of influence. Wait, if it's north of here, then... The Empyrean's throne? Did that happen because of something Inominat and Artorius did? I don't know. I've got a bad feeling about this. We should get far away from here, and quickly. So, the suppression... Well, that was certainly off-putting. But our job with Tabitha comes first. And we need a hideout soon, too. True enough.
All right, we're safely on the rolling waves. Don't you think it's time you showed us your face, mystery monk? <laughs> You're right. My apologies. I knew it! Prince Percival! Percival Ilmid Asgard. Crowned prince and heir to the throne of the Midgan Kingdom. So he's next in line, is he? It looks like someone already had me figured out. Yes, Your Highness. I could tell from your fragrant wood scent, as only the royal family may wear it. But if I may ask, why? Must I explain myself to gain your aid? I myself could ask what an exorcist is doing consorting with members of the underworld. I... I don't... It doesn't matter why you're here. On this ship, you're here for us to use to our advantage. Treat me as you will. It's not like I can ever go back. For a fellow born with silver spoons spewing out of his mouth, Princey Pooh is rather laid back. Prince Percival is an upstanding man, renowned for both his intelligence and his fair, just demeanor. It's widely believed that with him on the throne, Midgan's prosperity will continue and... Look, I played dumb earlier, but I smelled that scent too. He wore it for us to notice. He wanted us to know just what sort of position he held, and how useful he could be to us. He surprised me, at least. Do you think we're being led into another trap? We definitely can't take that possibility off the table. When the time comes, he'll make a good hostage, if nothing else. Not if the ones we face are after his life, too. For now, let's just make sure we keep an eye on him. The Prince... He said he couldn't go back. I wonder why. The whole island's a prison. It's like a secret fort or something. Weirdly quiet, though. Yeah, I don't see a single exorcist on watch. Let's scope out the inside. An exorcist! Are you alright? Headless Knight is back? Think this is the demon that attacked her? Hmm, another prison riot? Kurogane, dial. You two protect Kamoana and the Prince. Understood. You're giving me a headache. Stay sharp. This one must have survived the riot. There are none who can resist my spear. So did the Abbey actually fail to quell the riot? I find that hard to believe. The prison was heavily staffed with exorcists. Perhaps it was venomization. Venomization? A dark ritual. Forcing demons to eat each other in order to produce ever stronger demons. So the demons devoured each other, creating a demon too powerful for the exorcists to control? I imagine the riot didn't help. Now whose fault could that have been, I wonder? Whatever happened doesn't matter to us now. We need to focus on how to take this place for ourselves. That exorcist from before said something about a headless knight, right? 
That one's probably the leader. Then we hunt it down and destroy it. Until we capture the island, let's use this room for our staging ground. I'll leave the Prince and Kamoana to you two. Eliminate any enemies who come in. Understood. Don't expect much from me, but all right. Kamoana, if anything happens, call for me and I'll come running to protect you, okay? Okay. You stay safe too, Eleanor. Let's go. Unless you really want to get hurt. Sorry to catch you down. Hey, it's you again. Ah, I'm so busy! I'm so busy I can't even notice what's going on around me! You're not fooling anybody. Why bother? I was hoping to not have to deal with you guys. Whenever I run into you, I always lose so much monies. Because Velvet always forces unreasonable demands on you? Oh, Miss Exorcist! Your concern warms my little turtle's heart. I'm not forcing anything. I just think he's trying to take advantage of us by fixing his prices well above market rate. Price fixing? As in deliberately marking up items so as to take advantage of the less fortunate? I was under the impression that the Abbey strictly forbade such unscrupulous business tactics. Ah! Perish the thought, Miz. Our accounting is always above board. 25 hours a day, 8 days a week. No matter whens and no matter wheres, you can get whatever you need for the same fair price. That's good to hear. Eleanor, give the nice turtles that smile he so desires. I'm sure running a business is hard work. Hang in there. M much obliged.
From the way you were talking, it seemed like you had an idea of who was behind the riot. What happened here? I think someone in your position would know. There were reports of a large riot, but I was caught up in chasing you, so I heard little else. It was a small affair, really. Velvet Rokuro and I were being held on this island. Velvet instigated the other prisoners to riot so that we could escape. She used the prisoners? Yeah. You'd expect different from me? <sighs> How did it end? We didn't stay to see, but the prisoners were losing badly. At least, that's what it looked like. But if that was the case, then where did all the exorcists go? I know Oscar left to report the incident, but the other guards should have remained at their posts. Well, if they didn't flee, we have to assume they were all killed. By this headless knight, perhaps? Well, no sense losing our heads, I suppose. But it looks like we're in for a heck of a fight. All we have to do is mop up anyone who's left.
Headless Knight! He must be the product of the venomization. Well, he definitely looks vicious enough. <laughs> Not as vicious as our Velvet, though. Where's his voice even coming from? I don't know. Look inside. <laughs> Well, that takes care of that. Yeah. I feel something again. More malevolence? No, another Earth Pulse point. It must be on this island. I sense it too. It's very close. Directly underneath us, I would guess. What is this place? Welcome to the most secure cell in the entire complex. The darkest hole in Titania. Feel anything, Lafayette? Yeah. I think this is the Earth Pulse Point. If this cell is where the Earth Pulse Point is, then does that mean it housed Etherian? Yeah. And a real hungry one at that. Every day, they would toss demons into its cell. It would devour its fill, then wipe the blood from its lips. Never once realizing, it was delivering to Inominat the malevolence of hundreds of demons and prisoners. And then one day, there appeared before it a female Moloch, who shattered the barrier and freed the Therian from its cage. But the Therian knew no mercy, and it devoured its liberator. And it was then... It was then I obtained the power. The power to avenge my brother! Velvet... You're a Therian? This prison island was a feeding ground for the Therian, harnessing the malevolence created by the prisoners within. But because Velvet escaped, the malevolence went out of control. Wow, the same darn thing that happened back in Kamoana's village. Lord Artorius would never have done such a thing. No. What's so unbelievable? That he used his wife's brother as a human sacrifice? That he imprisoned his wife's sister? Because that's what your damned holy shepherd did! All to get his hands on Inominat's power! I'm sure he... he had a reason for... A reason?! To spare the world of its pain! 
Don't give me that! Who will spare my brother's pain? Who will soothe my brother's despair? He murdered my little brother, Luffy! And you'll stand there and tell me it was for the greater good?! At any rate, that's one less Therian for us to track down. Velvet. What? Did Velvet yell at you so hard you're starting to hear voices now? I have a feeling something's wrong. Kamoana could be in danger. But we already beat the Headless Knight. I still can't shake this feeling. Please, let's go back and check on them. This recipe looks real tasty. Scout Velvet is a Therian, is she? I knew there was something off about her. But it's what she cried out that's really on my mind. Luffy said, is Velvet truly Lord Artorias's younger sister? She never told me. If it were true, I suppose it would explain her knowledge of Lord Artorias's training. If you're so curious, why not ask her yourself? Hey Velvet, what's your connection to Artorias? Uh, Rokuro, have some tact! I heard you whispering. It doesn't bother me. Artorias was married to my late sister, Celica. He was our brother-in-law. We lived together for more than ten years. That does explain a few things. So he sacrificed his little brother and turned his sister into a Therian. But... you were his family. To his view of the grand scheme, family is inconsequential. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. All he did was act according to his ideal logic. <sighs> well, enough chit-chat. Let's get moving. So it turns out that Velvet is a Therian who consumes malevolence. And too much malevolence is what changes people into demons. Strong enough malevolence can persist after the person who created it dies, turning their corpse or spirit into a raging monster. That's how undead and phantom demons come about. Then the demons Velvet killed turned back into humans because she devoured their malevolence. Yeah, and consequently, they avoided becoming undead or anything like that. So she saved them. Well, I mean, a corpse is a corpse, of course, of course. Do you think she could devour only the malevolence and turn a living demon human again? Unfortunately, that's impossible due to malevolence's self-reinforcing nature. When Therians are connected to Enominot through an Earth Pulse point, they seem to be able to absorb small concentrations of malevolence from the surrounding area and inhibit the creation of new demons. But any human who builds up enough malevolence to turn into a demon will keep producing malevolence as long as they live. That's right. To devour any malevolence, I need to cut it off at the source. That's how my powers work. Velvet, 
I'm sorry. I don't mind it. Actually, I find it convenient. This way, I'll never forget my hatred for Artorias. Plus, as long as you stay away from an Earth Pulse point, you get to keep the power of any malevolence you consume. Fuel for my hatred, yes. Uh. Sweetheart. A headless knight and a horse demon. It's giving off a ton of malevolence. This must be the true survivor of the venomization process. Oh, I get it. The dying exorcist lady wasn't saying headless knight is back. She was going for headless knight on horseback. Whatever the case, we'll fight whoever we have to to claim this island. Now I can't help but wonder how the horse is running. Get close and look if you're back here with us. That's venomization, all right. Definitely stronger than that headless lump of armor. I beg your pardon? Not you. <laughs> the demon from the villa? No, look! It's absorbing the malevolence. It's Etherian. 
Actually, that hawk is Griffin, my one and only friend. <laughs> A damned Therian. So that's what Tabitha meant when she said we'd find out shortly. But your highness, why do you have a Therian? It's like I said, Griffin has been my dear friend ever since I was a child. Even if he's a Therian now, that hasn't changed. So you knew you were helping a Therian escape. What are you plotting? <sighs> I have no plots or schemes. I just want Griffin to be free. I guess we shouldn't be surprised. The crown prince and future king, he's gonna do whatever he likes. <laughs> I suppose I am at that. But if I am, it's the first time I've ever been allowed a choice of my own. When you're a prince, you're not a person. You're an institution, one designed to serve the state and its people. Say, for instance, you're doing your law studies and your back suddenly itches. What do you do? I mean, I'd scratch it. Who wouldn't? When I did that, my tutor gave me a whipping so hard the blood ran down my back. The reason being that I prioritized a personal feeling, that is to say my itch, over my studies in service of the state. Uh. Seeing Griffin lay claim to the skies, let me imagine my own freedom. It was my lone solace over the years. But then, he turned out to be responsive to Inominat's power. I take it the Midgand royal family is well aware that the Abbey is creating Therians? Of course. How could we not? The kingdom offers unequivocal support to Shepherd Artorius's vision of reason and will. Even so, if there was one thing I could never permit, it was seeing Griffin locked up and unable to fly. Never. I tricked the exorcist on guard and disabled the barrier. But then Griffin attacked the exorcist and killed him. That's why you said you could never go back. Eh, they can overlook a single dead exorcist. But with Etherian removed, malevolence will engulf the capital. I knew full well what I was doing. And yet, I couldn't watch my friend's life be stripped away. Your Highness. He chose a single bird over the world. Why do you think that birds fly? Uh, that's what Lord Artorius asked me. My anatomy book says birds can fly because their bones are light and their wing muscles are enormously strong. Birds fly because a bird that cannot fly is no bird at all. That's what I think. I understand now. As long as you remain on this island, you may do as you please. But if you try to escape, I'll kill you. That should work. This way we'll have him on hand if we ever need a hostage. Understood. I appreciate you letting Griffin and me stay here. Well, now that that's taken care of, let's build ourselves a hideout. Hey, Velvet, do you know where Eleanor is? Wasn't she just playing with you? Yeah, but then she left. I'm worried because she looked pretty sad. Can you go find her? Why me? Mm. All right, all right, fine. Just don't cry on me, okay?
There you are, Eleanor. Kamalana's worried about you. You actually came looking for me? Can't say no to a crying child. Ah, uh, indeed. She may be Ethereum now, but deep down, she's still a lonely little girl. That's something I've come to realize in traveling with you all. Wretched demons and Therians. Even the Malakim who I'd only thought of as tools. They all live and think as humanly as the rest of us. Mm. I was so clueless. I didn't know what demon blight really was, nor what the Abbey was doing. Through it all, I... I knew nothing beyond blind belief in whatever I was taught. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. The coward's path is not that of an exorcist. They may say, I didn't know anything, so I can't be blamed. I can't... I can't live like that. <sighs> I think I'll stay here a little longer to cool my head off. Please tell Kamalana I'm all right. Don't stay out too long. The sea breeze can get cold. <sighs> Thank you. Don't get the wrong idea. If you got sick or something, Kamuana and Lafisa would worry. That's all. I have something to say. There's something I've been hiding, until now. I've been acting undercover on a special mission for Lord Artorius. I was to watch over the Malik Lafiset and bring him to Abbey Headquarters. So vital was the mission, I was to do whatever it took, even kill my fellow exorcists. You were gonna take me to them. I'm sorry for deceiving you, Laffy said. Originally, I was going to get you to lower your guard, then take you in. However, I no longer intend on following the Abbey's orders. You're turning your back on Artorius? No. I still believe in the sincerity of Lord Artorius. That the world he seeks is one that will benefit all humankind. But nevertheless, I simply cannot bring myself to condone the methods he has chosen to achieve that vision, so... I will help you protect the Therians... ...until I discover the answer I seek. Eleanor! I want to live a life that I don't have to be ashamed of, and to do that, I have to learn the truth for myself. <laughs> so, you live by your emotions after all. Maybe you found your own creed. Welcome to our wonderful world of wickedness. Don't equate us. To act in opposition of one's feelings is to act opposed to reason. You never make things simple, do you? You should be glad I don't. Yeah, after all, she's my vessel. Yes, yes.
So, I think our next order of business is to find ourselves another Therian. Well, that's the extent of my insight. Anyone got any actual leads? What if we had Eleanor swipe some intel on them from the Abbey? That could work. I don't know. It wouldn't work. Officially, the Abbey still considers her a traitor. So who would leak anything to her? Yeah. Besides, we can't put Lafayette in danger like that. And anyway, Eleanor's terrible at being a spy. Ungracious, but accurate. You know that special underground cell from yesterday? I want to go back there. There's something I want to try out. All right, let's go. Laffy said, I must offer you. We're here. What now? Well, so I've been thinking about Earth Pulse points. They're where the flow of the Earth Pulse, the Earth's natural forces, are concentrated. Right. And Inominat is using those points to acquire malevolence and reawaken himself. You seem to have a knack for sensing them out. Once you're close enough, you can even pinpoint their location. Except, I don't have to be close at all. When we came here yesterday, I felt another place. A place just like this. Are you saying you can use this Earth Pulse Point as a conduit to find the others? I think so. I don't know how far it works, and I can't say if Etherian will be on the other end. Still, it'll give us something real to go on. Please, give it a try. Okay. Anything? Yes, I felt it. There are dozens of Earth Pulse points scattered around, but I sensed a few big ones that stood out. So you can even detect their size? Yeah, at least I think I can. This island is one of the big ones. There are two more like it somewhere to the east and the southeast. But I think those are the Warg Forest and the Temple of Palamedes. Still. That suggests we're more likely to find Therians at the larger Earth Pulse points. We've got three Therians to go. Anything that helps us narrow down our choices is a boon. Yeah, you've done great work today, Lafayette. That's for sure. Thank goodness you're here. You're a marvel. One of the wonders of the world, kiddo. It's not that big of a deal, really. Hmm. Then let's go Therian hunting. 
We have an honest to goodness lead. Or dishonest to badness in our case. Again, still not good enough. You think it's your swords that are weak? You don't think maybe your body's just stupid tough? No, if it can't cut me, it's just not good enough. I need stronger materials to make a better sword. I'd love to try orichalcum, but getting that stuff is next to impossible. Orichalcum. That's the strongest metal in the world, right? A rare metal that's only been found in ancient ruins, and seldom at that. I've seen fragments of the metal myself, but I've never even heard of a piece large enough to forge into a weapon. I have. I heard a rumor that a block of orichalcum was discovered in an ancient ruin some 200 years ago. Unfortunately, the boat carrying it sank in a storm. From the depths of the earth to the depths of the sea. A sunken ship. Treasure at the bottom of the sea. <sighs> that would stir any sailor's heart. If we knew where to find it, could it be salvaged? The ship's crew drowned, so nobody knows where she sank. Besides, it's a centuries-old rumor. Who's to say it's even true? Right. <laughs> no sense in wishing for what can't be gotten. I'm sure there's other material you can use. <laughs> even Dial makes a good point sometimes. Hey, what do you mean, even Dial? Even Dial's getting angry! Saying it like that's just weird, Kamoana. Even Kamoana's getting weird! <laughs> Alright, so our target is an Earth Pulse point about as big as the one here. Let's start with the closest one and go from there. Which way is it? The closest one... is to the west. Got it. Lead the way, Lafayette. My pleasure. Scout...